Hotline Miami, an instant classic to most, iconic for its crude art style and horrific and mysterious scenery. This game proves that a good storyteller only needs a few words to create an immersive world for the player to explore. This game got me more involved with the story than Skyrim, a game with hundreds and hundreds of years of lore in the game, and not to mention with vastly inferior graphics to that game. This game is really fast paced and it really complements all the graphics in the entire game in general because as somebody who's supposed to be a psycho killer and supposed to be killing around like a vigilante, it's really important that you get in and get out as fast as possible and the game encourages you to do that not with an end timer or with points and those do exist but you don't have to get the highest points to beat the level. Like certain games, you're supposed to beat the game in a certain time limit but in for most most of the levels in this game you're just supposed to go through it fast and you can intuitively feel the speed of the game going through even though that the game does take quite a while to beat like for me I have about four hours in the game just beating the main story and that goes right into my next point this game is only four hours long I mean at launch you're paying around thirty dollars now you could pay up to fourteen dollars for it on certain sites which is very steep for a game that only has a story that's worth four hours of gameplay for me in my case it's about three and a half hours of gameplay and that counts a few attempts at the bonus game content only a quarter of the length of the actual original game so i would be adding probably up to four hours playing the entire game in its entirety um, this review does not contain any of the bonus content that you can partake in the game optionally after you beat it. I will be reviewing the bonus content either before or after I review Hotline Miami 2, most likely after, just as the last video, putting all of the bonus content from Hotline Miami 1, Hotline Miami 2 into one video. And yeah, the controls feel tight in this game. Really, it's a skill-based game, you can get into it and it's really good. The one really bad gripe I have with the controls is the fact that to change the controls, I don't know if there even is a possibility of doing that without doing registry editing and stuff like that. I don't know if there's a notepad somewhere, but let me just tell you, if you're a beginner computer gamer, you're probably not gonna be able to find a way to change the controls without um, looking up a YouTube tutorial about it. And these control issues of course make sense when you put it in the frame of 2012 when the game came out, and then you also realize that it was made by a relatively small company at the time. I'd just say that this game does really good for what it was supposed to be, but that's not what I'm rating in these videos. What I'm rating in these videos is, should you play it today? And my simple answer to that is yes, if you stop watching this video now, I want you to go and buy Hotline Miami. It's a great game. For $14, it's a little steep. Um, maybe get it on sale. Like, uh, that would be a good idea. $9 is perfectly good. And yeah, four hours of gameplay for $14 kind of sounds really dumb. But trust me, those four hours are going to be very fun. The game is replayable. I definitely could go back to it again if I really wanted to. Um, I could go and try to get the highest score that I could on all of the missions. I could go do a whole bunch of stuff like the bonus content. There's also leaderboards so you can compare your various statistics to other people who have played the game before. And though I don't know about how active it is, I do know that there is a mapping community for this game for custom maps and possibly even custom stories. I've never checked it out before. It might be really interesting for a lot of people to play and see how it goes. The game's moddable. I mean, it's just a super good package and a tiny little game from a tiny little company that pulled off an instant classic. Let me tell you one thing about this game. The bosses are super fun and super rewarding. It takes you a while when you get to the first boss 
spoilers, the motorcycle guy, you just feel like you had a really fun time when you figure out just how to beat him. And I remember I played that um, boss fight for like 30 minutes, and 30 minutes for the first boss in the game. And 30 minutes for that boss was terrible, it's a terrible time. And I spent 30 minutes just doing the intro over and over again, so it was also monotonous. But I never thought it wasn't fun. That's the perfect thing about this game. No matter how many times I retry a level that I can't beat, I never think that it's not fun. Because I'm always thinking of different ways to solve the problem. I'm always thinking of different weapons I could pick up, different characters I could use, and trying them all out to see if I could beat this portion. So I like to keep these reviews short, so now I'm at the point where I'm going to rate it out of 10. And I know since it's my first review, this kind of sounds like a, a cop-out answer, you know, starting it in the middle at the beginning. But I think this game is really perfectly described as a 6. It was amazing for its time. I would have probably given it a 8 when it came out. The problem that I have with it is, is that it's not super easy to play through again. I mean, you can play through it about 5-6 times probably if you're bored, but the problem that I have with this game and a lot of single player games that I'm going to talk about later is that you can't play through them over and over again. Two free games on my account account for most of my hours in Steam, and that doesn't count like Gary's Mod, for instance, that is very cheap. And the reason for that is that these are multiplayer games, they have infinite replayability because people will always be playing them. And that's the thing I see, that's the problem I see with Hotline Miami is that it's not infinitely replayable. You can't just go over and over again trying to get the highest times, you know? Eventually you're gonna get bored. But let's go back to my score. This is probably the second highest score that I'll give a single player game. I'm probably only ever gonna go up to a seven with a single player game, just because of the fact that single player games can be beaten and left behind, especially when they carry like 40, 50, 60 dollar price tags like the Metro Exodus series, and a whole bunch of other games like that. Metro Exodus, I mean, probably you'll probably get 36 hours out of each game, and you'll pay for the game for like $40. And that's a bad bargain, in my opinion, because I've put hundreds, and actually in Counter-Strike's example, thousands of hours into a free game, which I got for $12 back in the day, but still. So before this video drags on too long, and honestly, I've started this video a couple months ago, I've been playing other single player games that I plan to do reviews on in the future, I'm gonna leave you with Hotline Miami as a 6.